Many Muslims would say that there is no division in Islam. There's just Islam and that's it. However, when it comes to organized religious differences, there are fundamental differences in the beliefs and practices of Sunni and Shiite, also known as Shia Muslims, that cannot be ignored. Welcome back guys to FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton and in this episode we're going to be exploring the differences that has produced two groups who identify as Muslim, Sunni and Shia. So let's get into the differences starting right now. Starting at difference number 10 and that is the Prophet Muhammad's successor. This is considered to be the dominant difference between Shia and Sunni Muslims. In Shia Islam, they hold that Ali ibn Abu Talib is the appointed successor to the Islamic Prophet Muhammad and he's the head of the Muslim community. However, Sunni Muslims hold on to the belief that Abu Bakr was actually the first Muslim leader after the Prophet Muhammad based on election. The difference at number nine is the difference in the afterlife philosophies. There's a whole lot to say about this, but uh, let's try to keep it as simple as possible. Both Sunnis and Shiites believe that in the afterlife, there's either paradise or hell. Now the split comes when deciding on how somebody actually gets to heaven or hell. For Shias, if one believes and follows the Prophet Muhammad as well as the 12 Imams, then paradise is guaranteed for them. However, Sunni Muslims believe that they must have faith in Allah, his prophets believe in the righteous deeds presented in the entire Quran, as well as accept Muhammad as the final prophet in order to have a chance at attaining paradise. But even if you do all of the above, you're still dependent on the mercy of Allah. Let's talk about self-flagellation. This is a big one. So Sunnis disagree with the practice of self-flagellation so much that they view it as a sin, like a big sin. They do not even participate in the act in any capacity, in any way, shape, or form. Now over to the Shias, they practice self-flagellation to commemorate the martyrdom of Hussein. And these acts, they consist of flogging your own back, hitting your chest with your hands, or using knife or chains or other sharp objects. Now, we're not going to show images because some of them get very, very, very graphic. But as you can imagine, this practice can be very, very painful for someone to experience. The difference at number seven is the worship at graves. Sunnis strongly oppose the idea of praying at grave sites and it's viewed as shirk or a major sin because they're relying on someone other than Allah for their help. Shias, on the other hand, they are totally fine with the practice and they actually encourage it. There are some varying beliefs about this though, but touching or kissing the shrines of the prophets and the imams, they believe that it does not imply shirk according to their beliefs, nor does it associate that this particular person is equal with Allah Allah because Allah has the ultimate sovereignty in this entire universe and Muslims submit to and worship and seek the help from him only. But Shias maintain the idea that visiting shrines is merely a gesture of respect. They're not actually asking for help from those individuals who passed away. Now let's look at the difference at number six when it comes to choosing a leader. When it comes to choosing a leader, Shia and Sunni Muslims have completely different views. Shias believe that the doctrine of an Imam is perfect because it comes directly from God and that the leader of the Muslim community must be a descendant of the Prophet Muhammad. Sunnis on the other hand don't believe that there is any basis in Islam to have spiritual leaders that are admired or being held in such a regard like this as a leader of a Muslim community. Also Sunnis believe that leadership shouldn't be a birthright but it should be a trust that is earned and which may be given or taken away by the people themselves through voting and election. All right guys, since you reach halfway in this episode, I just wanna take this time to let you know that we recently did a video about the 10 differences between Muslim and Christian prophets. So Islam and Christianity, they have a lot of the same prophets that are identified in each of their holy books. However, some of the details are a little bit different or some of the events are seen at different angles. So it's a very interesting one looking at the, the differences and the comparison and everything. So I'll link to it down below in the video description section. Enjoy that one after you finish watching this one. Okay, so let's jump back into this episode. Difference at number five. And this difference has to do with Al-Mahdi. 
Although the concept of al-Mahdi is not an essential doctrine in Sunni Islam, it is popular among both Sunni and Shia Muslims. Both groups agree that he will rule over Muslims and establish justice. However, they differ when it comes to his attributes and his status. Sunni Muslims, generally speaking, do not believe that Mahdi has already been born. Sunnis in general reject the 12 verse Shia principle. The Mahdi is the 12th and the last in a chain of of the purified Imams. He was born on the 15th of Shaban, 255AH. His name is Muhammad and his titles are Mahdi among others and his birth was kept a complete secret. And she is believed that the 12th Imam, yes, will return as the Mahdi with a company of his chosen ones and his enemies will be led by the Dajjal or the false messiah. The next difference we're looking at at number four is temporary marriage. Temporary marriage is an ancient Islamic practice that usually happened when a man had to travel far distances. And pretty much what these marriages do is it unites a man and a woman as husband and wife, but only for a predetermined and temporary amount of time. Certain Shias still hold on to this practice. However, Sunnis, they view this as adultery. So if you're married and you leave without a divorce, that's adultery, that's a sin. The difference at number three leads us to holy cities. Both Sunnis and Shias have three common holy cities, which are Mecca, Medina, and Jerusalem. The only difference though is that Shias also believe that Najaf, Karbala, and Kufa are holy cities as well. Now, an important practice of Shia Islam is that of visiting the shrines of Imams in Iraq and also in Iran. In Iraq, these include the tomb of Imam Ali and also visiting the tomb of his son, Imam Hussein, because both are considered to be major Shia martyrs. The difference at number two has to deal with angels and their free will. Both Sunnis and Shias, they believe in angels, that God created them from light and they carry out his will, they're powerful creatures and everything. However, angels lead very different lives when it comes to <laughs> Shia and Sunnis. Okay, so for Shias, they believe that angels obey God's commandments, but they are granted the option to disobey. But with this belief though, Shias believe angels have no desire to sin, so they remain faithful regardless, but they do have the option to sin if they choose to. Sunnis though, they feel that angels always obey God's commandments and that's because that they have no free will at all. So even the potential or the possibility to sin and stray from God isn't even there for angels. So as you can see, that would be a completely different lifestyle when it comes to the angelic beings based on the beliefs of Shia and Sunni Muslims. And finally, we end off with a difference at number one, and this is the difference in praying. Sunni Muslims, they pray five times a day. This is known by everybody, even people that aren't Muslim. Whereas Shia Muslims, they can combine prayers and pray three times a day. And uh, one of the things that you can use to identify a Shia praying is that you'll often see a small tablet of clay from a holy place, often from Karbala or a place like that. And on that thing, they place their forehead on it while they're bowing down in prayer. Now for Sunnis, Sunnis have their arms folded in various positions from below the navel to the chest, right over the left. But Shias keep their arms straight by their sides. And just like that, we've come to the end of another episode. This was a brief look at 10 of the biggest differences between Sunni and Shia Muslims. Hope this video brought a little bit more understanding and highlighted some of the differences. Either way, regardless of where you fall on this spectrum or if you're not Muslim at all, I'll always wanna hear your thoughts and comments down below. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like. If this is your first time here to the channel, go ahead, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified every time we post new videos that teach you about the different countries, cultures, religion, and people of our world. Until next time, guys, stay awesome, stay educated, and I'll see you soon.